So good morning everyone. Um, I'd like to welcome you to the um, to this video presentation. Today we're going to be discussing my um, the, 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 the unit four presentation um, for the project that we've been working on during the second year of the HNC. Um, my project has been um, this particular rig here. It's um, a Star Delta training rig. Um, we'll be coming back to that a little bit later on. Um, in front of me I've also got the PowerPoint presentation. Um, at the moment you won't be able to see that but it can be seen um, a little bit later on. So we'll start, start the presentation. So this is the Star Delta training rig and my name is Matthew O'Dell. In this presentation we're going to be talking about the introduction and we're going to talk about the aims and, obje uh, aims and objectives, um, the ideas and planning that have gone into it the actual implementation, um, the summary, um, any improvements and, rec and recommendations, and then lastly, it's the acknowledgements and references. I am a, an electrician, I'm also a teacher and an assessor for the college um, for electrical installation. Um, I work at the college part-time and I am also a self-employed electrician. Okay, so the aim was to design and build a reliable three-phase training rig that can be used to educate learners within the electrical and engineering industry on the operation of star and delta or star delta starters and to aid in their educational development and understanding of such starters. Basically, it's just to um, help learners and help um, um, to, 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 to educate them on the operation of how a three-phase Star Delta starter operates. I had five objectives and the first objective was it must be safe um, to operate. Okay, It's no good um, anything like this and, it, and, and, and a student or a teacher working on it and it not being safe. So it must be safe to operate. It needs to be something that's interesting to look at. So in that way um, lot, lots of dials, a few lights, etc, um, etc. Et it also needs to be simple to operate. Okay? And you can't get much more simple than, than what this is. Um, a simple start and a stop button, um, labelled, even labelled start and stop. It also needs to complement all of the learning styles. This particular rig is for those learners that um, they're not they're, they're a visual learner they need to be able to see um, what's going on rather than just reading out the theory book how something works to actually come along and, and, and physically see the operation um, of, of the starter and what's actually happening um, is really important and lastly it needs to be reliable so reliability is important because it's going to be used over and over again in all manners of um, situations in during education so it must be reliable it's no good coming to it and it not working okay so ideas and planning my my idea was an issue with a, conf uh, a conventional star delta starter um, motor operating a three-phase motor is that it's sometimes difficult to witness the changeover operation of the contacts from star to delta all that is witnessed is the speed of the motor runs up a little bit faster. So my idea was to create a visual aid using three pairs of lamps that are, work, that are in series. So we've got one pair, two pair and three pair. And each pair of lamps is connected in series and represents the actual coil of a motor. And that's the U coil, the V coil and the W coil. So on an electric motor, on a three phase motor, the actual coils or the windings are labelled U, V and W. When this is first started up, these lamps, um, or these coils, shall I say, are connected in the star arrangement. That means that they are only going to be operating at 230 volts. When you apply 230 volts over two lamps in series, each lamp is only going to work at a quarter of their power. When it moves over to delta and 400 volts is applied across these, these are now going to have a much higher voltage across them and therefore they're going to shine brighter. And that's the idea that you can actually witness the changeover. This changeover demonstration is visually very clear and it's very easy for the learners or for the people to see it working. It must be up to the current regulations. Now at the moment we're working towards the 18th edition 
uh, BSM 671 2018. So these must be up to the latest um, of the regulations. Planning started in September 2019, um, simply just drawing out circuits and carrying out calculations and considerations with safety of a training rig. Many of us have been in, in the situation where we've just been sat there listening to the teacher talking about the, um, the theory of something. Well, this is the idea of this then was to bring it to um, to the students so you can actually see what happens rather than just listening to the teacher talk the theory of it all the time. We've had various meetings with learners and teachers um, and even employers and that began in around two uh, uh, December 2019 just to get their ideas on things so I spoke to uh, some, some of the guys from Tata Steel, I spoke to some of the other guys in industry that I work for and just asking them about um, get, getting these sort of ideas. Um, testing took place at st various stages throughout the build, so I would build it, I would test certain things to make sure it's working um, and, and make sure it's safe. So once the build was almost complete, I was able to start carrying out testing on it. I was carrying out testing and, and monitoring what was happening, I had various issues with some of the voltmeters or ammeters which I had to just sort out, but that was all relatively simple. Um, and then I was ready to take it to the students and actually show them in the classroom. Um, there is a video that's, um, that's on YouTube, in fact there's two videos on YouTube um, that um, complement um, this, this in operation. Another thing that I had to take into account was the size and the weight of it, um, because obviously it needs to be moved around from class to class at some point. This was all mentioned about in my design report. In summary, the aim of the training rig was accomplished once the build was completed, the rig has been used with several lessons to aid um, in what would normally be a very heavy theory lesson. So the rig has been used in various classes now when we've been talking about starters or star delta starters. Um, so that's been uh, primarily level three groups um, and apprenticeships groups and a normal very heavy theory lesson then suddenly turns into a bit more of an interesting lesson because they've actually got something like this to look at to, to break down the theory. Many learners have benefited from it so far. Um, various learners have commented at how the rig improved their understanding of the subject and that having a visual aid that looks interesting and goes live was more interesting than just looking at the presentation of a screen. So that's really quite important because the idea of the learners they need to learn but so many of us myself included don't look, don't necessarily learn that well just looking out of a book and and reading how the circuit operates you need to be able to see it and i'm sure many of you would um agree with that as well you need to be able to see things happening that's one of the ideas was having these analog um, meters because they just you can see the the, the, the meters moving backwards and forwards when things are working and it just makes it look so much more interesting. The cost of the rig has been about £600. That is a lot of money. Um, I estimate that I've put probably 25 to 30 hours of designing and building this rig. Any improvements and recommendations? I could have simply replaced all of these um, analog meters with digital ones. If I'd have put digital meters in, that would have given me a, a, a precise number. And so further calculations could have been used to um, um, use exact figures. One of the reviews that I had with Paul, um, he proposed p p building some kind of changeover switch, which would basically take these out, take the lamps out, and have a motor, three-phase motor, plugged directly into it. So therefore what I could do is have a three-phase motor, just a small three-phase motor, and a simple changeover switch so I could operate these or I could operate the motor, just so you could actually see the difference between the motor um, and the tra training rig. And hopefully what you would have seen there is that if the motor had been working, you wouldn't necessarily see the changeover, and then that would have maybe demonstrated the effectiveness of the rig. Um, in order for me to have done that, I perhaps would have had to have had slightly bigger range of ammeters um, because the, these, these, the, the, the lamps use hardly any current, 
whereas a three phase motor would use slightly more current so that might have been a consideration that we would have had to have changed. So that's basically the end of the video presentation. There are a couple of YouTube videos um, for you to, to look at if you want to see the actual operation of them. So those YouTube videos, you're welcome to have a look at those um, a bit later on and then you'll actually see the, um, the rig being used in a teaching environment. So any questions? Well, obviously you can't ask me questions um, like this, but there are a couple of questions that various students have asked me. So I think I'll just talk about some of those, a couple of those questions very quickly. One of the questions is, is how does this comply to the electrical regulations? So the regulations that we work with are BS 7671 um, at present. That is the 2018 version. So they, they came out in, in 2018 and it's known as the 18th edition. And one of those and, and various regulations in there are to do with um, um, prevention of electric shock. And that's in chapter four or, sorry, or, or, or part four, shall I say. So what's really important is um, we have what's called IP rating, index of protection. OK, so what that basically means is, is that I must not be able to get my fingers in contact with any of the live parts. So obviously... Um, all of this is a live training rig and so I mustn't be able to inadvertently accidentally just touch any of the live wires obviously I'm going to get an electric shock. Now when we look at a rig like this there's two different IP ratings there's IP, um, IP4X and IP2X. Now the top surface of any enclosure must be rated to IP4X so that basically means that um, there must be no holes on top greater than one millimeter diameter um, and on the top surface here there are no holes so it complies with IP4X. Um, that would also include this surface here and any surfaces where it's um, a flat surface and that complies to that. The other IP rating is IP2X and that basically is a 12 and a half mil or, or what we say a finger and you mustn't be able to put your fingers anywhere where you can um, gain access to any of the live parts. In order to achieve IP2X, um, we've put this plastic front cover with a hole in the front, so you can put a screwdriver in to adjust the timings, but you can't actually touch the actual inner parts. Um, and then on the switch on here, this is the main um, circuit breaker, um, there is the plastic guard around the back of that so again you can touch the actual switch but you can't gain access to any of the inner parts there um, so so that completely applies with the IP2X rating. The other question to do with the prevention of electric shock um, was use of RCDs. Now um, there is no RCD on this there is a circuit breaker but there is no RCD um, that comes under regulation 415 um, and it should have had, um, I would have liked to have put a built-in RCD on this, but all of the, um, in the college where we are going to be using this, everything is RCD protected. So I didn't want to actually build a, an R, put an RCD into this um, because that could cause problems with the other RCDs tripping. So, um, so at the moment, this is completely non-RCD protected, but it's okay when it's plugged in. One of the other questions um, someone said to me was, it, it, um, why, why so many dials? Why do you need so many dials? Well, again, if you look, watch the YouTube video, you'll see that every single dial on here does, um, does mean something. But I'll just very quickly go through what the dials are again. So you've got your dials on this side, which um, is the voltage for the supply voltage. That's important to know. So you've got between phases and between phases and neutral. You've got the... Um, ammeters for the um, um, for the uh, for, for the current going through the actual through the lamps or through the coil, and then you've got the voltmeters on this side that show you the voltages across the potential differences across the lamps when they are either in star or delta, and then everything is also labelled up very well, so everything is on there that you can see. And not only that, we also have got these an amber and a red button to tell you when it is in star 
or in Delta. Again, that can all be seen on the, um, um, on the YouTube videos. Um, so I think really that's the end of the presentation. Um, I hope it's been interesting. Um, and I'd like to thank you all for watching the video.